three and four. Hey Drew James here from LearnGuitarInLondon.com I hope you're having a great day. What I've got here for you is Old Pine by Ben Howard. Now, most of the battle with this one, believe it or not, if you've been playing for a little while, you shouldn't really be attempting this unless you've been playing a good two years, I'd say, is uh, the tuning. So when you get the tuning, cap on fret three, then you really will make good headway with this song. It's just a few simple chord shapes and then a picking pattern to learn and you're all good. But I will be breaking all the little parts down in detail. I'll just be playing sort of a short section of it in this intro now, but I will be showing you the whole song. Don't forget you can get the tab to this completely for free just by joining the Learn Guitar in London website. It just takes a name and email address to do that. I've left a link in the video and a link in the video description. Let's start learning it. So for Old Pine, the tuning, is essential. All right, so the tuning quite simply, normally we're tuned to E, A, D, G, B, E. Eddie ate dynamite good by Eddie. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna tune all of the strings to either D or A. Okay, so that's all you need to know. So everything to either D or A. So if you're in standard, then your thickest string, your E, you're gonna tune down to D. So loosening the tuning peg until it says D. If you are using an electronic tuner, then make sure it's not D with a spot next to it or D with a star next to it, because that means D sharp. Loosen it down to, it just says a pure D. The A string you leave as it is because it's already an A. The D string you leave as it is because it's already a D. The G string. Now with the G string, what you're doing is, and it's a little bit, it'll feel a bit funny if you're not used to tuning very much, is you're actually taking it up you're tuning up past G sharp to A. So you're gonna start tightening the tuning peg, do it gradually, do it gently until it's at A. The B, the B we're going to loosen down to A. So the B string down to A. And finally, the uh, E string, well, we're gonna do it like we did the top string and we're gonna loosen it down to D. Okay, so a little recap on that. And if you do have the tab, it is written in the top left. Um, is you take the thickest string down to D, you leave the A and the D string, you take the G string and tune it up to A, the B string you take it down to A, and the highest D string you take it down to D. And then when you've done all that, grab your capo, put it on fret three, okay? So I'm blocking a lot of it out in this tutorial, but this is basically fret three here, one and two are behind. What you might want to do after you've put your capo on is have a quick retune. So if you're using electronic tuner, then just do a little quick tune because occasionally when you put the capo on, there can be a bit of tension and that can sometimes mess with the tunings. All right. So next, what we'll do is we'll have a look at the intro of the song. All right. So I'll do it really slowly. Whenever I introduce a part, I'll play it real slow and then I'll break it down for you. So first of all, although I'm actually faster and more efficient as fingerstyle, Ben Howard definitely does this song with a pick. There's a bit of strumming going on later on, and I'm pretty certain that he's using a pick a lot of the time, although I'm sure he could probably do both. Um, so use a plectrum, use a pretty thick plectrum as well, so you're nice and close to the strings, you don't have much um, bending going on. I'm using a one mil blue Tortex here to get this job done. So once you've got the tuning in place, really the song, it, the actual fretting and the chords, if you've been playing a little while, isn't too difficult. So the first chord is fret seven on the thinnest string with your index finger, 
and fret 9 on the B string. Now in this case, fret 9 with the capo being where it is, is actually fret 12, marked on this blood name with this little symbol here. But you may have two white dots on the top of your neck here. So you've got those two held down, and then you're going to get started with learning the picking pattern. The picking pattern is the open D string, open G, B, and E, just going down the strings. Ideally, you would be alternate picking, down, up, down, up. Okay, but if you go down, 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 up, that's fine as well. That's actually how I've been doing it. But ideally, you're down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, grabbing plenty of the pick, showing just a tiny little tip of the pick as you move down. So that's your first part. Then take this chord shape and move it down two frets. So move the index finger down to fret five and take your ring finger with it on fret seven. So you never let go of the strings and do the same picking pattern. So that's, so that's seven, five. Then move your index finger down one string to fret four. And in this time, use your middle finger on the B string on fret five and do the same picking. So you've got nine, seven, seven, five, five, four. And then finally move the index finger down again, but this time to fret two, and the ring finger goes back to that first shape that we had on fret four on the B string. Okay, lovely chord. So you can see that there's only two shapes. There's this one and this one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this one and this one. Okay, so you've got shape one on fret seven, shape one on fret five, shape two on fret four, and shape one on fret two. Always with the same picking pattern. And that is your intro. Little tip on this, what I try to do is get that slide sound, and you can hear that on the record up to there isn't it so you try to get that sound it just sounds so much nicer now when you do it the second time you just lift up the index finger early to get that open uh, D string so it's and then we're into this I'll do it slowly fretting there's not much to have to get into you hold down fret 2 on the A string but it's really about getting understanding this picking pattern so it's A string D string G string D string then thinner string then D G D so it's that's the first half of the bar I'll do that again repeat that. So I'd recommend just getting the hang of that picking pattern. And then you do the same picking pattern but moving your middle finger down to fret to the second fret on the D string. And it's the same picking pattern. got this part at the beginning just make sure you lift up the last time okay good that then repeats now you need to listen to the song I'm not going to tell you how many times it repeats but it then goes back up to this from there so so it does repeat I think it repeats around about five times but I really want you to listen to the record to get that so just play it slow the one thing you'll find with the record is that the picking is very quick and that is the one part that sort of um 
caught me out a little bit. For me personally, I like putting my little finger on the body of the guitar and staying nice and close to the strings and holding, you know, so much of the pick so I'm staying close and there isn't much um, movement away from the strings as I play. So you do that about five times. When it gets to the last time, you basically stay on this second chord, this second fret on the D string, a little longer. Doing the same picking pattern until you go and finish just on the thinnest string halfway through the bar. Okay, there's then a wrap. So this is where he kind of he hits the strings. Now I haven't written this in the tab, but if I were to write it in the tab, it would be a load of crosses, but he just does a little hit and then he's into the verse riff, another important component with making the song sound good. So the verse riff goes. Okay, so the important thing to know about this riff First of all, is that you can see that my fingers on my left hand are well stretched out for the fretting, right? So my ring finger's pretty much always primed on fret four on the D string, and the index finger is behind it on the same string on the second fret. So try to keep these fingers spread so that when you start to achieve the lick, you've got your fingers in the right place, okay? In terms of fretting, once again, there's not an awful lot. In fact, there's not an awful lot in this song because the open strings just sound so great in that key of D. So. We've got this, we play the thickest string, then we play four with the ring finger on the D string, but with the index held down on two at the same time, because we're gonna flick this finger away to reveal to the index finger, like so. Now for a good quality flick off, you wanna not be using the tip of the finger, you wanna be lazy dropping the fingers like this and dragging your callus over that string and yanking it down. So that goes four, two, then we're gonna pull this finger off to an open D string. So hopefully you've got that. Then you play the open A string. Then open G, open D, open A, open D. So I've got these fingers spread. Now that timing on that flick off is important. It's not, it's pick, pick four, and just hesitate back off slightly. Okay, good. The next half of the bar is the same thing, but then you play two, Flick, two, flick. So play two on the D string, flick it off, play two on the D string, flick it off. And the whole thing together is. So once you've got that main verse riff, we're then gonna do exactly the same thing coming into bar nine in the music, bottom line. And that's the first half of the bar, so we've already learned that. We're then gonna hold down fret two on the A string like we did earlier. We're gonna pick A string, open D, open G, open D, open E, open B. So we're going. And then we're gonna strum the bottom five strings while we're holding that chord. So it's. So I'll do bar nine again. Then into bar 10, hold down fret four on the A string with the ring finger and index finger on fret two on the D string. For those of you who know power chords, it's a reverse power chord. We're then playing the A string, the D string, the G string, and the D string. And then open E, B string, and then strumming the bottom five. So bar nine. Apologies for the hesitation. Okay. And that 
is our verse riff. So I'll play the verse riff very slowly, and then I'd like you to learn that, get that off by heart, and then speed it up. got your intro, you've got your link after the intro, which is just this. Then you've got your verse riff, which is important, which we will be coming back to. And then, so there's singing that goes after that. I mean, I don't know how on earth he does, keeps that all together at the same time, but he does. Then we've got some chorus chords. So we hold down fret four on the D string and fret five on the A string, and we're going to strum and hold it for a bar. And we go... So this is fret two on the D string and fret four on the A string. Then we repeat, we just go back up, keep the fingers nice and close, index and middle. And then that time it's just half bar. So these are the chords, four and five, strumming all six. And these ones you can play that finger string, but does any of the open strings sound good in this? So they're your chorus chords. And then that goes back to the verse riff. And then they're singing again. Alright, so there's lots more repeats, just playing that verse riff. Okay? This time, when you come out of the end of verse 2, so verse 2 riff, we're playing this twice with the 2 and 4. And then we're doing chorus second time round, as I've written there. And we stood, steady as the tiles in the wood. Da -na -na, da -na, 4 and 5, back to 2 and 4. Then this time he sings it again, but just down strums on each chord, 4 for each. And we stood. So this part here, I hope you're sort of following along there, right? So as the iPad fell, we sang. On the word sang, you do this two and four, and this two and four has a rhythm pattern that goes down, up, down, up, down. Sorry, it's yeah. So it's down, up, down, up, down, up, into down a uh, sixteenth beat. So that means going. Indicating that there's something big coming up, which is this new riff. So it's and then we go down, 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 and then we're into the mid section from there. Okay, so we've got a few new chords, but they're really easy. Fret four on the A string and fret four this time on the G string, and we're going to be moving this chord shape around. His four. His five, his seven, and his two. Okay, so I'm just moving that chord shape around. Four, five, seven, two, and then eventually open. Okay, from there, you're doing down strums. Okay, all six strings. And I'm going to say the fretting to help you learn where you move. So you go four, five, four, five, five, four, five. Four, five, five, four, 
know the song really well, you can actually hear that movement. Anyway, you can hear it in there because there's there's strings. There's so just if you follow that, you'll be absolutely fine. You repeat that five times that lick, and then you finish on these sevens. Back into. So what I've called this outro louder verse with strum. So it's exactly the same riff, but we're just doing strumming on the bottom three strings. outro is we've got these five fours and we're going down been useful for you. Enjoy Old Pine. It's such a fantastic fingerstyle song.